I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Had a good, had a good week, kind of a crazy week. Thank you to everybody who helped us with the carpet squares and stuff last week. We kind of put a bunch of new flooring in in the, in the back in the classrooms and in the daycare stuff, and, uh, and it was awesome. And we completed that on Sunday, and on Wednesday, somebody drove through the wall of our building. So that was exciting. <laughs> But kind of um, like Andrea was saying this morning, you know, it's, uh, it's okay because God is good all the time. And really, no, nobody was injured. Nobody was hurt at all. So that's huge praise. And um, it, it really isn't that big of a deal. We'll, we'll figure it out, put a new wall in, whatever. We'll, it, it'll all be good. So it's, uh, it's been kind of a crazy week, but a good week at the same time. So... I am glad that you are here today. I'm glad you're worshiping with us. Um, This morning we are we wrap up uh, this two week series called Bad Advice, Uh, and last week we talked about lots of different bad advice, kind of societal bad advice, uh, pieces of advice that people kind of give us, whether they mean to directly or whether it's just a society thing. And uh, we covered uh, stuff like follow your heart. Um, because trusting our emotions is just a bad idea. It's just bad advice. Uh, And the good advice was um, to trust God, to let God lead us. That's a much, much better idea. Bad advice last week was get rich or die trying. Good advice, don't fall in love with money. Find contentment in Jesus. And then uh, we did YOLO. Um, (laughs) You only live once. Just try it. Go get it. And the good advice was trust God and he'll take care of you. And so this morning we have some more bad advice for you. But first it's time for advice from Shirley. Oh gosh, thank you so much, Pastor.
Talk about bad advice. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure I can let her keep doing this because I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> All right. Well, she touched on a, a few pieces of bad advice. We're going we're gonna to talk about some other bad advice. And we've all taken some bad advice, haven't we? I mean, really? We've all, we've all listened to it, followed it, and it turned out to be not good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I bet you can jump over that without getting wet. That's what my brother said. <laughs> Spent the rest of that day soaking wet. This is bad advice. It just happens. Anyway. Um, the first of our bad advice today, well, hear me out. It may offend you, but just hang in there. Uh, this, this is a piece of advice that I hear a lot. It will be okay. It's going to be all right. Everything is going to be okay. <clears throat> it's in the songs. It's implied in the movies. And it comforts people, so it must be true. Everything is going to be okay. And... Um, I, I've given this advice before, and sometimes I, I think about that and I go, you know, I feel like I'm lying a little bit. You know what I mean? But, but, but we've, we're like, well, that, but that's okay because it, it comforts people and it's okay. Everything will work out. They're there. We've all either given that advice or heard somebody give that advice, and it's well-meaning. And there's times when it's true what I'm concerned about is the times that it's not true. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lie, really. And we tell people this. And it's not okay to lie to comfort somebody or to comfort ourselves. Sometimes we say it because we don't know what else to say. So we just kind of comfort ourselves and just say, yeah, it's, it's going to be okay. And in our head we're going, but it's not. You've, you've got some stuff. And we do that. And I think we have to be careful of that. We run into situations all the time that require us to respond. And if we don't respond the correct way, well, honestly, it won't be okay. It won't be. But if we respond the correct way, we can have hope. And that's a reality. Because we have, a, we have to give any given situation to God. If we do that, we can have hope. We can be comforted with his promise. In Romans 8, it says this, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So a friend of mine was doing some bad things. He was getting in trouble for some things. He got caught doing meth. And, uh, and I went to visit him in jail. And it was, it was an uncomfortable situation. It wasn't easy. And everything in me just wanted to pat him on the back and say, you know what, man, it, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. But the reality is, it's not okay. It's not going to be okay. You did some things that you shouldn't have done. And now you're in a situation that you're not going to be comfortable in. And it's not going to be okay. And so I'm sitting there and I'm wrestling with myself and I'm just like, I, I'm not really sure what to say. He's looking at two years in, in prison. And we have to understand that, that what, what is meant by Romans 8.28, and we know that God causes everything to work together for good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So he made some choices. And so what I had to say is, you know what, man? This stinks. This is going to be hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to suck, really. But here's the thing. If you give it to God, if you truly give it to God, you'll get through it. And that's the advice that, that I think we all need to hear, no matter what it is. Instead of saying, you know what, it's going to be okay. They're there. They're there. It's going to be all right. You know what? Give it to God, and you'll get through it. I can promise you that. You will get through it. <clears throat> it's kind of funny. 
I work with the daycare some. And one daycare kid hits another kid and, and he goes to time out. And he, <clears throat> when he gets out, he knows what he's supposed to do. He knows that he has to go apologize. And usually when they're disobeying the teacher, they have to go apologize to the teacher too. And they learn that because it's good manners. It's the right thing to do. And so they walk up to the teacher and the teacher says, you know, he says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't listening. I'm sorry I hit somebody. And, and what is our natural response to that kid? That's okay. It's okay. Is it though? <laughs> and I've caught myself doing that many times. Is that really good advice? Is it okay? We need to correct that. Listen, Johnny, when you hit, it hurts. And that's not okay. And I hope that you don't do it again. That's a proper response. I know, it's weird. But it's the right thing. We don't mean to, but we all give bad advice. It's okay. Good advice? Give it to God. Give it to God and you'll get through it. Second piece of bad advice. Uh, it's you against the world. This is another one that's kind of the society that gives us that. And have you heard that? There's a local commercial that's playing right now on the radio, and for the last few weeks it says that. It's you against the world. Or, or maybe in another form, it's, it's the world is, is out to get you. And if you don't do this or that, the world will chew you up. Have you heard that before? It's kind of, kind of a thing. <sighs> so, if you don't do it, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, it's you against the world. You've got to make sure to get what's yours, to protect yourself, to take care of yourself. And the whole idea, it's anti-Bible. It really is. That's not what the Bible teaches. It's not you. In fact, it's not about you. It's about Jesus. And when we make it about something that it's not, it screws everything up. It goes a bad direction. Besides, the Bible clearly teaches, mm, it's what we call the one another's. You know what I'm talking about? We were created for God's pleasure. That's what we were created for. And for one another. Thessalonians says, see that no one repays another with with evil for evil, but always seek after, which is good for one another and for all people. In Galatians, it says, bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. Love one another, be devoted to one another, accept one another. One another is listed a hundred times in the Bible. That doesn't exactly sound like it's you against the world. One another. More like we're in this together. And more importantly, we're in it with Jesus. And we need to understand that. We're not going through anything that he didn't do, and then some. You against the world is a very lonely way to see things. And Jesus said that's not the case. In Hebrews, in Hebrews 13, it says, For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Think about that. It's not you against the world. Bad advice. You against the world. Good advice. God will never leave you. No matter if you've been abandoned by every earthly creature, we need to know that God will never do that. Number three, don't be such an elitist. You know, there are many paths to the truth. I've heard that one. There's more than one way to God. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've heard that, and people really believe that, and it's societal bad advice. Yeah, so there'll be Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims in heaven, along with Christians. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, what if you don't believe in anything? What if you don't believe in anything? 
then then you're not going to go to heaven. Yeah, because it doesn't exist. Who's to say there isn't no one knows more yet. than one version of heaven? No one knows which one's right. Who says any of them are right? Yeah. There's some beliefs where they're just like, if we're not right, you're all going to hell, and you're all going to die in a horrible, painful way if you don't believe what we believe in. So, Do all roads lead to heaven? I don't know. I haven't been down any of them yet. What do you believe in? I'm Christian. You're a Christian, so you believe in God. Do you believe just Christians will get to heaven? No. So do you believe a Buddhist will get to heaven? Sure. A Muslim? Sure. A Hindu? Sure. Well, if they go to hell, I believe that God would probably give them a second chance to believe in him so that it, to go up to heaven. Yeah. Whatever you believe, and it doesn't matter to me. Whatever floats your boat, so. So it really doesn't matter what you believe. There's not one way to get to heaven. No, I don't think so. According to what they believe, they're going to their heaven. Not okay, our, you know. so Christians will go it to depends on their religion. Like, okay, I, don't, I don't think that it's one right with belief. I think that everybody, no matter what, okay, I'm Christian. I believe in God. That's right. not saying that the guy next to me doesn't believe in Allah. He believes his way is the right way, and he's going to get to heaven. I believe mine's the right way. I don't think there is one religion. I don't think our God is the right God, and somebody else's God is the right God. I just think it's all depending on what you believe. So Muslims, Buddhists, Christians, we all could get to heaven as long as we're good people. Yes, and, that's and we all. Believe in a that's solid moral. You've summed it up okay. perfectly. That's how yes. I feel. Yes. I think it's all one world belief, and everybody just has a different take on it. Honestly, I, I watched that and. Um, it kind of makes me sad because I think a lot of people are deceived. I think a lot of people are tricked into believing that that's the way that it is. Because the thought is that all religions are fundamentally the same. It, it's like that mountain theory that, you know, you go this way up the mountain, I'll go this way up the mountain, and somebody else is going to climb the back of the mountain. But reality is we're all going to get to the top of the mountain. And that's kind of the idea behind it. We're all going to end up in the same place. Another theory is the elephant theory. Like five blind men approach the elephant and they describe as they touch the elephant and, and feel the elephant what they're feeling. And one says as he touches the trunk, it, it feels sort of like a snake and, and the ear is, is like a fan and the tail and the body and they all describe something different and yet it's the same thing. The theory is that our top five religious leaders are like the blind man. Buddha, Muhammad, Christ, Dalai Lama, whatever. They can all only know certain aspects of the truth. But they only have part of the picture, they claim. The bad advice that all paths lead to truth or to heaven, research shows that 49% of adults believe this. On the video, there's probably more than that. And I don't know if they edited that for, for that purpose or whatever. But a lot of people obviously accept that. That it's... John 10 says this. Jesus is speaking. It says, yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. Well, that's kind of elitist, isn't it? That's kind of on your own and, and just... By your, <clears throat> I believe that many religious leaders are blind, like the blind men and the elephant. They might even mean well, but they're grasping for truth. And they have a small bit of, of reality, and then they make assumptions. No man has a monopoly on the truth. So God became a man in Jesus it says that in 1 John. It says, this is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. For all paths to lead to the same place, they need to blend together, right? I mean, if, if, if I'm climbing the mountain, I'm going up. And if you're climbing the mountain, you're going up. Might be a different path. But here's the reality. If you take all of the world religions, all the main world religions, they really don't blend together. They actually contradict one another. 
For example, if you asked the different religions, is God a personal God? The Buddhists would say, no, not at all. Hindus would say, God is formless and abstract. But the Bible teaches that, yes, God is a personal God who wants a personal relationship with you. Or if you ask them, well, how do we find salvation? Buddhists claim that it's self-effort. Hindus say that it's devotion and works is how you get to salvation. Muslims say that we pay for our own sins, but you can never really be sure if you're going to go to heaven, if you've done enough. But the Bible teaches that Jesus paid for our sins, that salvation is a free gift of God, not works-based so that no one can boast. It also promises that you can know for sure that you will be saved. These are just some of the contradictions between the world religions. It doesn't work. All the roads cannot logically lead to the same place. One plus one is two. One plus three, it's not two. It doesn't work. John 14, it says, Jesus told them, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. The bad advice is that all roads lead to God. And I think it's deceptive. I think that when we start to follow that road, it just makes me sad because if we don't go through Christ, if we don't do what John 14 says, it says Jesus told him, I am the way and the truth and the life. And if we don't go through Christ, we don't get there. We need to know that. Bad advice is all roads lead to God. The, the good advice is no one comes to the Father except through Jesus. That's a reality. The last one, and it just ties right in, so I thought I would do this one too. Good people go to heaven. Kind of the same idea, but throw in the theory that, that how could a, a loving God let people go to hell? 55% of Americans believe this, that good people go to heaven. And in other cultures, it's even higher than that because of what the Buddhists and the Muslims and the Hindus believe, that it's kind of a, a, a works-based religion, salvation is. But this is not what the Bible teaches. In Romans 8, no, is it Romans 3? Because I screwed it up in my notes, 328. So we are made right with God through faith and not by obeying the law. It has nothing to do with works. It has nothing to do with how good of a person that we are. And the, com the confusion among followers uh, of Christ is, is that doing good is a result of our faith. And so it gets turned around. Doing good means I'm a Christian. No, I'm a Christian, so I do good works. If there was a scale... If we were balancing, do I do enough good works in order to get? There'd be no need for Jesus. Because it would be all about us. It would be all about what we do. And do we do enough? There'd be no need for Jesus. There'd be no need for the cross. But the need for Jesus is real. He had to die. That's crucial. Without Christ, there are no Christians. Bad advice one, it will be okay. <laughs> Good advice, give it to God and you'll get through it. Bad advice two, it's you against the world. Good advice, Christian, God will give you, will never leave you or forsake you. Bad advice three, all loads lead to the truth. Good advice, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to God without Jesus. Bad advice for good people go to heaven. Good advice from Ephesians 2. For it's by grace that you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It's the gift of God. Let's pray. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you. Thank you for the opportunity to learn more about who you are. And God, I just pray that we would, one, we'd understand this advice is not, it's not from you. 
And we need to sometimes go against society and what, what society believes and accepts. And God, we need to be swimming upstream sometimes, going against the flow. We need to teach the truth. We need to look at your word and understand the truth. God, I pray that for us. I pray that for everyone in this room, that, God, we could begin to understand the truth so that we could share that truth. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys, thanks for being a part of the journey today. I hope you have a great week. If you're sticking around for the class, and I invite you, even if you didn't sign up for it, um, we're doing the, the membership interest thing. Uh, we're going to wait about 15 minutes. We're going to order some pizza. Uh, we're going to get organized, and then we're going to go ahead and have the class. It's probably a 45 to a 45 minute class, something like that. And if you're interested in membership at all, it's not a commitment. You're just uh, checking it out. We'd love for you to stick around. Thanks.